So here in this tutorial, we're going to be working in Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion. And essentially what I want to do here is show how we can make a custom shape generator for highlighting areas of our screen when we're creating things like video tutorials or other graphic content in Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion. So one of the problems with the built-in generator, so we're using from our text generators up here at the top left and our generators are elements generators we're using the shapes option here on the screen now so the circle works great here with the outline and the fill turned off for highlighting different elements but the rectangle isn't quite so flexible and the reason for that is that when we rescale it it disproportionately scales the width of the outline of this shape which we don't want so i'll just show you the problem that we get when we rescale it so i'm going to turn the fill off of this and then we're going to come to our video properties up here in the inspector and if you don't see the inspector up here on the top right then just come to window show in workspace and inspector or command of four and that will bring this up and I'm going to scale the height first of all so you can see that as I scale that height the width of the lines to the left and right stay the same width but the the width of the lines the horizontal lines grow as well as we change the scale, which we don't want. It kind of looks a little bit ugly as we do that. So we're going to look at how we create a generator in motion that we can control that doesn't have that same problem. So we're going to jump into Apple Motion now. And I'm just using Command and Spacebar to bring up my search up here. And I can double click on Motion to open it up. Now when Motion opens up, we want to create a Final Cut Pro generator. So we've got some different options here for transitions for motion projects for effects but we want to select this generator option and essentially this is going to allow us to publish properties of our motion shape into Final Cut Pro. We want to use the preset for broadcast HD so 1080 at 29.97 that's what we're editing in and we'll leave the duration as 10 that will be fine for our purposes here. So then we'll press open and we'll get this motion screen up. Now, we're not gonna go into a lot of detail in motion here. We're really just gonna be dealing with one shape and how we publish some properties for that shape once it's placed onto the, the motion timeline down here. So we're coming across to our library on the left-hand side here. And if you don't see the library of the inspector, go to window and check library so that you can see it up there on the left. Now, once we've brought the library up, we're gonna to go to we're gonna to go to shapes and we're gonna come down here and select the rounded rectangle. Now with the rounded rectangle, we can turn the rounded edges on or off. So we have a little bit of flexibility there in Final Cut Pro and we can publish that property too. So I'm gonna drag this up to my layers here. So I have my rounded rectangle there. And now what I wanna do is go into the inspector and set up the basic properties for this shape that I want to appear when I bring it in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm gonna to come to my inspector on the top left here. We're going to turn off the fill. I want this to be a highlight outline rather than a, a filled shape. We're going to turn on outline and I'm going to change the color here to a red. We can also publish the color too so we can anything we publish from motion we can change on the fly in Final Cut Pro in our generator as well so we'll publish that in a second. And then what we'll also publish too is in the properties, we're going to publish the scale in terms of the width and height. Now, once we've turned on the, the width here, we're going to set the width here to eight pixels. And then we're going to come up to the geometry. And it's in here that we can publish properties for changing the scale of our shape that's not going to affect the width of that outline stroke around the outside. So if I come to my size options here, you can see I have width and height for this basic rectangle. And when I change the width here, or when I change the height, the outline of eight pixels is staying exactly the same. So it's not distorting. So even if I come down to the very thin kind of horizontal shape here, we're not distorting the, the outlines there. So we get this nice kind of clean outline, which is what we're looking for. So we're just gonna bring this back to the default. So I'm gonna to come to my drop down here and reset the parameter. So we end up with a basic square. And we can also publish the roundness here. So we can publish the roundness, which means that when we come into Final Cut Pro, we can either have a rounded rectangle or a square edged rectangle. And it's really up to us in terms of what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and publish some of these elements. So if we come to the right hand side here, we'll drop down this menu and go to publish for the roundness. And then for the size, we're gonna publish the width and height separately. So I'm gonna publish my width and I'm gonna publish my height. And then we're gonna come back to the style options here and we are going to publish the 
color, so the brush color, and then we're also going to publish the width of that stroke as well. So we'll have those four or five elements that we can then modify once we save this and see it in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to go to File and Save. And at the moment, it's going to save into my generators. So I've made a folder in my motion library that is then visible in Final Cut Pro and shows me these generators. So we're going to call this custom shape generator. And we're not going to use it in any theme or anything like that. So basically, all we want is this category selected. And you can create your own category by checking on new category here and creating a brand new category. So we're going to hit publish. And as soon as this is published, we can jump back into Final Cut Pro and we'll come to my generators here. And this is the generator that we just created. I created one earlier too. We're going to drag this down to the timeline. And now you'll see that when we come across it, we get the, the red highlight. And if we go to our inspector on the top right, we get those properties that we just published. So we get the roundness of the edges. So we can make a square edged shape if we want to, or we can make a rounder edge shape. We can modify the width and the height and this is going to really allow us to highlight specific elements on our our screen when we're generating tutorials or software tutorials we want to highlight certain menus or panels that we're working with so for instance if we grab the move tool here and move this down to the layers panel and i'm centering it on the layers panel there then if i change the the width we can get that to match the width and we can get that to match the height of that layers panel. So now once we have this over the layers panel, we can modify the shape of this and we can also then modify this step by step as well or pixel by pixel by clicking once on our width and just tapping the cursors to increase the, the width of that. So it means we can be really nice and accurate in the width and height size that we want to create there for our outline of that particular panel in Photoshop. And then we can re remove the roundness and that means we get this nice square highlighter that we can set to exactly the right height and that doesn't have that variable width of the outline. So we get this nice clean shape. So now once we've added our generator, we can treat that like any clip in Final Cut Pro. What you may also have noticed in the generator that we've created is that all these elements are keyframable as well. So we can animate the shapes that we're creating to appear on screen as we want them to. So the size and the brush width and the roundness can all be animated as well, which could be useful depending on what kind of generator you want to create. So once we have that set up, then we can use that in any Final Cut Pro project. And if we want to share that with other people, then we can right click here and go to reveal in Finder and that will show us our custom shape generator. And all we need to do to share this is to zip this file and then we can email it or share it online um, with other people. And I'll leave a link for this shape generator so you can use it and reuse it. Um, and it'll be a zip file that you will install into your home folders, movies and motion templates and generators libraries. This is where you drop those generators that you create or where Motion will create those generators when you're setting things up in Apple Motion. So I hope that tutorial has been useful. It's certainly useful to be able to create your own generators for different things and it can speed up your editing workflow. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro or Motion, then please don't hesitate to drop me a message and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.